Happy Fantasy Friday. What is up, everyone? Today, boom, we're going to be reviewing the third Thrawn book, Star Wars The Last Command, and I'm covering the front in a very awkward way because my copy of the book has a very spoilery image on the front. I believe the new books do not have this image, so, like, you can actually, like, buy the book and not really worry about it. But yeah, I'm not even going to take the book out anymore. It's just going to be over on my shelf, just so I don't accidentally show the image. Anyway, so yeah, this will be a spoiler-free review for the third book, but it will have spoilers for the first two books. So I will link all my other reviews for this series below. And yeah, check those out. But yeah, what did I think of this book? The third book in this series, definitely the best of the three. I think the tier ranking is pretty easy, actually. The second one was the worst, third best. So why did I think the third book was the best? Well, first of all, I've talked about the characters in the other reviews. The original OG characters, Leia, Han, Chewie, uh, Luke, of course, they were all pretty awesome for the entire series, but there are a lot of new characters that were not in the f original trilogy in this book. So, Jade, Card, Thrawn, Pelion. Thrawn was good throughout. Card, I liked a lot in the first book, and then he kind of disappeared a bit in the second book and didn't really have too much purpose. Pelion was cool with Thrawn the whole time. But this book, I felt like all of those new characters, and even some of, like, Card's bounty hunter friends and, you know, people in the um, New Republic Senate, and, like, even all the minor characters, I felt like this was the best version of all of those characters. In particular, Mara Jade. Mara, we got flashes of her just being a good, enjoyable character. You had her in the last book with the weird, like, trash compactor trust fall scene towards the end, which is what I call it when Luke was in the trash compactor and he was relying on Mara to not crush him, <laughs> uh, even though Mara wanted to kill him. That was cool, but honestly, she was non-existent for most of the second book. And then the first book, she wasn't really fleshed out. We didn't really know her motives. Um, and that was part of what was interesting about her, but also it made her not quite... She didn't quite, like land for me as a character or not as much in the first book but yeah this book we get we get her motives we get like what she's feeling more so in a more like complex way so it's not like oh i hate luke skywalker you know it, it's it's a it's more deep than that her force powers are more fleshed out again it's not like she's becoming a jedi knight or a sith lord or anything but it actually, like, talks about them. Um, her relationships with other characters, Luke, of course, Card, of course. But, I don't know, she felt like she, like, didn't have relationships with the rest of the characters. But in the third book, she kind of got to bounce off other characters a bit more, go back and forth a bit. So, that was good. Oh yeah, and one more thing about the characters, the Nogari, which I complained about quite a bit in the second book review, they took up much less time. Timothy Zahn managed to use the groundwork from the second book, and knowing about the Nogari, and knowing about their culture and all of that, he used that well, I would say, but he didn't harp away on it for chapters and chapters this time. So yeah, characters across the board, very good or great. And you know, more broadly, after these books came out, a lot more expanded universe stuff came out. George Lucas started writing um, the prequel trilogy during the releases of this trilogy. And this trilogy, it proved that there was kind of a hunger for more Star Wars content that maybe people thought was out there, but maybe they thought it was, like, too niche to be profitable. Or they just hadn't seen it done, and they needed some sort of inspiration. And yeah, that's what this series really provided at the end of the day. But yeah, that's a side tangent. Back to this book, 
the plot was also the best in this book. Again, I feel like a broken record. The second book slowed down way too much with the Noguri parts, and it just was an uneven pacing overall in the second book. The first book was pretty good, but I complained about the plots of the characters feeling like they were intersecting in unnatural ways. It felt like Timothy Zahn was forcing conflict rather than having natural conflicts arise. Like, the conflicts felt manufactured in the first book. This book had neither of those problems, in my opinion. Yes, there were conflicts, but they felt like they rose naturally. And no, there was no part that was really too slow for me. I I couldn't even tell you the slowest part of this book or what I thought the slowest part of this book was. The third thing I want to say is just, like, conflict resolution. And no, I won't give spoilers, but... It was good. That's what I I will say. It was done very well. There were many conflicts. Um, There was, of course, like Delta Source, which no one knows who that is. Even Pellian's like, who is Delta Source? How are you getting all this information, Thrawn? Basically, most of my questions were answered. It did leave me wanting more. I remember feeling that way, but it did feel like a complete trilogy as well. It left me wanting more in like almost like a fanfic way, like Harry Potter, the seventh book was done, like, oh, like what happens after? But like, also, it's a clear resolution point, if that makes sense. And I I think like this, again, this book came out in 94. So this was like before fanfic. So the fanfic was literally more books by more authors and you know the quality of some of those books what I mean it varied greatly and I definitely am not an expert but I I have read some of them and I remember reading some of them and being very impressed and I remember overall I was fairly impressed but there were some that just geez like they were good fanfic quality maybe (laughs) I don't know I haven't read like a ton of fanfics throughout like genres and stuff but yeah, I mean, a lot a lot of the books were just not that interesting and written not as well as this Thrawn series was, certainly. And yeah, the characters from this series, you'll see. I think Thrawn, like when you see him in Rebels or you read the newer Thrawn books, you know, I feel like he's done well and like they do respect uh, Timothy Zahn's original Thrawn series. But people like Mara Jade are, like, I I don't know of any, like, Disney Mara Jade stuff, but correct me if I'm wrong, I guess. But I feel like she's a good character. Like, there may be a missed opportunity there. Especially now, there's more, like, YA-ish female, like, strong female protagonist kind of leads. Or even, like, strong female gray characters which is kind of what Mara Jade might fall into I mean you could write her as good or you could even write her as evil it I mean it depends and Talon Card I don't think he's really in the Disney content either as far as I know again I haven't followed the Disney content too closely but a lot of times when they need a bounty hunter or you know a smuggler or something of that nature they'll bring out Bosk or, you know, Dengar or whoever. Dengar did make an appearance in the second book. I did forget about that. That was, that was cool. Oh, and then IG-88, the bounty hunter droid. Yes. All of that. I'm just rambling about Star Wars expanded universe nostalgia at this point. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll wrap it up because I could go on for hours and hours <laughs> and I have to get back to working from home today so yeah thank you all for watching oh and happy fantasy friday I forgot to say that I may just like put that in uh, it'll be very unnatural <laughs> I'll just start the video happy fantasy friday jump cut immediately oh man life as a youtuber Anyway, thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that, all that, and join my Discord. I figured out how to make my Discord link and my Twitter link appear in every 
thing without me having to manually put it in every time which is great it's it like just in settings you can just have the same thing appear in every description so yeah that's awesome anyway bye